Welcome to Lecture Online. Now the next thing we're going to do here is look at the notation for derivatives. There's a lot of different ways in which you can indicate that we're finding or representing the derivative of a function. So far we've been simply writing it out, the derivative of, f of y is equal to 2x minus 4 if the original function y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. Remember, we take the exponent, put it in front, multiply it times the coefficient, so 2 times 1 times x, to the exponent minus 1, so 2 minus 1 is 1. Here we take the 1 in front, we get minus 4, x to the 0, of course x to the 0 is 1. And so simply the derivative of that would be 2x minus 4. But we could also write it as follows. We can also say that y prime is equal to 2x minus 4. So instead of writing the derivative of y, we could simply write y with a little tick mark like that, which we say prime, so this is called y prime. And that would then represent the derivative of y. Another way in which we can write is as follows. dy divided by dx is equal to 2x minus 4. So y prime and dy dx mean exactly the same thing. But here we write it out specifically. We say the derivative, that's what the d stands for, the derivative of y with respect to x. So that's how we read that. So the derivative of y with respect to x, we simply indicate there that the independent variable is x and the dependent variable is y. So we say the derivative of y, which is a dependent variable, with respect to x, which is the independent variable. Another way in which we can write is as follows. It would be the d dx of y, which is equal to 2x minus 4. So here, again, it means exactly the same thing, but just simply written a little bit different. It's the derivative with respect to the variable x of y, which is equal to that. Remember, this all means exactly the same thing. The derivative of y, y prime, dy dx, the d dx of y, all mean exactly the same thing. It's simply the derivative, and of course, in every case, it's equal to 2x minus 4 for that particular function. And next, we could say, well, the derivative is equal to the limit as delta x goes to 0 of the function, which would be of y, evaluated at x plus delta x, minus the function evaluated at x, all divided by delta x. And again, that would be, again, the definition of the derivative, which also would give us 2x minus 4. And finally, we can say, well, we can also write it like this. We can write it as f prime of x, which is equal to 2x minus 4, because remember that this could also be written as simply as f of x equals y equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. So if we write it like this instead, if we write the function, let me write over here, if we write the function as f of x is equal to um, x squared minus 4x plus 4, then the derivative of that function, f prime, is equal to 2x minus 4. Again, all of these things mean exactly the same thing. Then there's one more exception. Sometimes the independent variable is t when t stands for time. So here we have x, which could be representing position, is some function of time. And then if we want to find the derivative, we can simply write x with a dot over it. And so in this case, that would be equal to 2t minus 4. So instead of writing a tick mark, it's a little dot, and that little dot means that the function is a function of time, and this means the first derivative with respect to time, and that's how we write it. So again, that means exactly the same thing as this, with the additional information that if it's a little dot instead of a tick mark, that means the, the derivative with respect to time, and that would be the result there. So now you know all the various ways in which we can write the derivative of a function. So that way you don't need to get confused that there's a difference between them because really there's no difference at all between them. They all mean exactly the same thing and there's different reasons why we write, write the different forms. Sometimes it's just cleaner, sometimes it's easier, sometimes you want to give a little bit more information. And of course this is our old friend here that we just saw that we're using the definition of the limit. We can also find the derivative that way. And that will help us understand how to work with derivatives in the future.